GitHub's flagship event, GitHub Universe 2021, has just closed its virtual doors after two days packed of information, releases, and announcements. In this video, I'm gonna go through all the announcements and new feature you really have to know. Hey, welcome back to Coded Day, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Let's jump straight into the first couple of announcements. And let's start with the new projects. GitHub has announced this a while back, together with the revamp of the issue, which included the issues form, task list, and so on and so forth. But differently from those features that went live publicly, the new projects were kept under private beta. Now this feature graduates from private beta to public beta, and as such will be available for everyone. Built like a spreadsheet, the new project's tables give you a live canvas to filter, sort, and group issues, pull requests, and cards. You can also extend issues with custom fields with support for text, number, date, and single select types, filter, sort, and group by any field, and instantly switch between project tables and boards. Differently from the private beta, where the new projects were available only in a selected set of organizations, with this announcement, projects will be available to everyone, including individual users, and it will also be possible to create public projects uh, whenever instead before the projects were only private. And there is also a new automation capability directly embedded into the projects. Before, to automate the aspects of the uh, project management, users had to rely on GitHub Actions. But now instead, users will be able to simply turn on automations that help them keep their project boards up to date without needing any manual intervention. And finally, still talking about issues and projects, GitHub is introducing CFDs cumulative flow diagrams into the project experience. Thanks to this, users will be able to visualize progress, remaining work, and throughput of a specific project. It is currently unclear when the new chart will be available to everyone, but I can't wait to see it and use it, and also see what other kind of reporting and charts will be available in the future. All right, second announcement I want to talk about, and I'm pretty excited about, is the new command palette. The Command Palette is a new GitHub surface designed to improve how users navigate around GitHub and execute time-saving commands. You can quickly jump to your organizations and repositories and search within them for pull requests, issues, projects, files, and more. You can access the Command Palette just using the Ctrl-K on Windows or Command-K on Mac and start typing your commands. And if you then press the greater than key in your keyboard, you will enter the command mode where you can execute commands to optimize your workflows all without lifting your hands from the keyboard. What do you think of this? I love it and I think it's really, really cool. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. Next up, let's talk about releases because new improvements to the GitHub releases are now GA and available to everyone. I'm talking about the new redesign release UI and automatically generated release nodes. The releases UI refresh gives more clarity into what's included in a given release and recognitions for contributors in the community. GitHub has also made pagination significantly better and introduced new search functionalities. And now we have a handy comparison feature right in the UI to be able to compare two releases. But this is not all, because as I've already mentioned, now we also have the possibility to have automatically generated release nodes. This provides an automated alternative to manually writing release notes for your GitHub releases. With automatically generated release notes, you can now quickly generate an overview of the contents of a release, and you can also customize your automated release notes using labels to create custom categories to organize pull requests you want to include, and exclude certain labels and users from appearing in the output. You can also customize the automatically generated release notes by creating a template for them. This template is a YAML file, you can see an example here on screen, which must be called release.yaml and placed in the .github folder in the root of your repo. Before we move on to the next set of releases and announcement with some really cool stuff coming up, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful so more people can benefit from it, and of course that would mean a lot to me, thank you. Next series of announcements are about code spaces. Some of those are somewhat minor, like the availability of the support for code spaces in the GitHub CLI to help integrate the management of code spaces into user workflow, 
or the availability in beta of the REST APIs for code spaces management. And I've called those minor, even though I know that there's a lot of developers, users, and sysadmins out there that will rejoice for having those, because the next couple of announcements are even more exciting. First, the dev containers feature. The name may not be the most exciting thing, but believe me, this is huge. To customize your code spaces experience, in fact, and include custom tools and other configuration, you had to create a dev container.json file and edit it manually, perhaps adding different container images and post creation scripts, which frankly was not the best user experience. But now, users can very easily install new capabilities, features, and tools in their dev containers without the need to manually script those things in Docker files or even in the post creation scripts. In fact, you just need to add the template dev container definition through the add development container configuration files workflow in code spaces, and you will see the new feature selection, which change and depend on the previous selections. The selected features will be added to a new feature section of the dev container.json file, which is automatically generated, and the code spaces engine will take care of them for you. This is super cool, but I have another, even cooler announcement. In fact, now all the GitHub Code Spaces users will be able to access and use GitHub Copilot. Yes, you heard it right. Until now, only the users that were accepted into the technological preview of Copilot using the waitlist were able to use the service. But now, every user that has access to Code Spaces will be able to have access to the technology preview of Copilot as well. And even without the need to apply for accessing it. It's cool, right? If you're not familiar with Copilot, it is an AI pair programmer trained on billions of lines of public code that helps you write code faster and with less work. And speaking of Copilot, we do have some announcements for this service as well. GitHub, in fact, has just announced the support for more languages, including Java, C++, and C Sharp, the support for additional IDEs, thanks to the plugin for the JetBrains editors like PyCharm, IntelliJ, WebStorm, and more, and an enhanced OpenAI model that makes the service even more accurate than it ever was. All right, we are almost done, but I still have two more announcements for you. And again, I would really appreciate if you can like this video so more viewers can benefit from it and discover all the new features and announcements from GitHub Universe 2021. Thank you. All right, next announcement will make uh, organization admins very happy because GitHub has just announced that we will get custom repository roles. The custom repository roles feature allows organization admins to create custom permission levels that can be applied to teams, organization members, and outside collaborators. They must enter it from one of the predefined roles, but can extend them because you can pick and choose the permissions you want. And once you have your custom repository roles created, you can even assign one of those as default role for a repo. Okay, last one. This is an improvement of the pull request experience, especially when working on big projects or very busy branches. It's called pull request merge queue. Once a pull request has passed all its usual required checks and approvals, instead of the developer trying to merge the pull request, which can turn into a race with other developers, all trying to avoid the dreaded, your branch is out of date, please update, also triggering a new round of CI checks, the developer simply adds the pull request to the merge queue. The queue then creates a temporary branch with that pull request and the pull request ahead of it in the queue and triggers CI. Once CI passes, the pull request is merged by fast forwarding the main branch. This feature has been released in private beta for organization accounts, but I hope that will soon be extended to more accounts because I think it's a really good thing for big projects and busy branches, as I mentioned before. All right, that's it for today. So what do you think about this year's GitHub Universe and all the new feature and announcement? Let me know in the comment section below and also let me know which one is your favorite feature or announcement. Also, if you're into new features, check out this video over here in which I cover the reusable workflows in GitHub Action that have been recently released. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.